Hey everyone, this is Michael from Up and Running Tutorials, and in this video we're going to walk through each file and folder that comes with a new Gatsby project and talk about what each one of them does so you can start customizing your site. I've just created a new Gatsby project using the default starter, and I've opened it in VS Code and started up Gatsby's development server so we can see our project in the browser. If you're not sure how to get to this point, check out the previous video, which I've linked in the description below. It walks you through how to start a new Gatsby project and get it running on your computer. Assuming you've done that, let's take a look at all these files that Gatsby gives us. As you can see, this new project includes a number of files, number of folders. We did not write any of this code, so this comes with the Gatsby project. Starting up at the top, we have the cache, node modules, and public folders. All three of these folders are automatically generated, so you basically don't need to touch these. The cache folder exists because Gatsby uses something called Webpack to take the code that you write and then process it into the version that will be served in the browser. So the cache folder contains everything Webpack needs to build and run your site. Let's just take a quick look in here. You're going to see a whole bunch of files that you did not write. This is not for you. This is for Webpack. So basically, you just don't ever really need to go into the cache folder. The cache folder is basically for Gatsby, and you don't really need to worry about it. The public folder is also generated by Gatsby. What the public folder contains are the files that the browser actually reads to display your site. So when you deploy your site to hosting, what people see when they visit your website is the contents of the public folder. So if we look inside the public folder, we see an HTML file, which is the first thing the browser will load. And then we see some supporting files and assets, like some automatically resized versions of our icon file. All of this is generated by Gatsby automatically, and it's recreated every time you run Gatsby Develop or Gatsby Build. So you don't want to make any changes inside this folder because those changes are going to be lost. This is a folder basically that Gatsby writes for you. The other folder in your Gatsby project that you basically don't need to touch is the node modules folder. This folder is a little different. It's not generated by Gatsby when you run Gatsby develop or Gatsby build. It's generated when you install your project's dependencies. This folder generally contains a lot of code. Let's have a look in here. Okay, you can see there are hundreds and hundreds of folders. Each of them contains the code for a different library that Gatsby is depending on. The good news for you is you basically, you never need to open this folder. The code that's in the node modules folder is determined by the dependencies that are listed in this document, your package.json file. So let's open that right now. This file contains some metadata about your project. And then what's interesting for us is this list of dependencies. Each time you install a new dependency, it will show up in this list automatically. And then any code that it needs to run will automatically be downloaded and placed in the node modules folder. If you're wondering why this list looks pretty short, while this number of folders looks way longer, the reason for that is that each of these dependencies have their own dependencies. So to see what those are, we open one of these lock files. I'm going to open the package lock.json. And this is another automatically generated file. It's very long. You do not want to be making any changes in here because this file will be automatically rewritten each time it needs to be. So it basically takes the rather simple list in the package.json and it expands it into the full tree that specifies exactly what version of each dependency we need. And if those dependencies also rely on their own dependencies, which version of those dependencies do we need? You don't need to edit anything in node modules. If it gets deleted, you can reinstall all of these just by running npm install. You also never need to edit the package lock file because it's automatically generated based on this, the package.json. So that covers your node modules folder. You don't really want to touch that. And it also covers your package JSON and your package lock. Before we move off of this topic of dependencies, I just want to show you this yarn lock file. A Gatsby project comes with both a yarn lock file and a package lock file. These are basically alternatives. They'll automatically be generated based on which package manager you use. If you're typing yarn commands, you're going to keep regenerating this yarn lock file. 
If you're typing npm install commands, you're gonna keep regenerating this package-lock.json file. You can delete the lock file that you're not using, or you can just ignore it. It's just there to help make sure that the correct dependencies are installed in your node modules folder. Okay, so that's it for the files that you are not supposed to touch. Those are no fun. Okay, let's now move to some files that you can absolutely update. And we're gonna skip over the source folder for now because you're gonna spend most of your time in that folder. I'm gonna save it to the end. Right now, let's quickly go through some of these other config files that are sitting here in the root directory of your project, starting with the git ignore file. If you use git to track changes to your project, the git ignore file tells git which files in your project it should ignore and it should not upload to the remote repository. This is really useful for large folders that are automatically generated anyway, like the cache, the node modules, and the public folder. Since these folders are easy to regenerate, there's no need to track them and store them. And so they're included here in this git ignore file as good examples of folders that can just be ignored. Here's the node modules folder, and down here, here's the cache folder, here's the public folder. And as one other example, this file is excellent if there is a security or privacy concern with the data that's in a file, which is often the case with a .env file. It often contains sensitive data like passwords and other access codes. So it's not a file you want to upload to your repository where other people could potentially read these values. So you can basically leave all these defaults as they are if you're not sure what you would like to change. You can also feel free to edit this file. You're also free to delete this file completely. Nothing about your Gatsby project will break if you don't have this file. It's just here to help you get started if you are using Git in your project. Now, the next file that is included with a new Gatsby project is this Prettier RC file. Prettier is a tool that will automatically format your code as you write it. It'll take care of simple things like indentation, semicolons or no semicolons, those little things can really slow you down if you need to manually fix how your code looks as you write it. Prettier is a great tool that takes care of all that so you can just focus on writing your code, then every time you hit save, your code will look prettier. That's why they called it Prettier. This tool is totally optional though. If you're not using it, feel free to delete this file. Prettier is not required for Gatsby to work properly. They just included it because they thought it might make you happy. Next up, we have a file called Gatsby Browser. This file is for advanced use cases when you want to customize what happens when your site appears in the browser. For most use cases, you won't need this file and you can just delete it. If you want to learn more about what you can do in this file, check out this link that Gatsby has included here. I'm copying that. Let's paste that into the browser. When you have an advanced use case that requires you to add some code in response to specific browser events, like when your site is first being rendered in the browser after your site has first visibly appeared in the browser, etc., then this is a place that you can come to get instructions. In general though, you can use Gatsby without using these APIs or modifying the Gatsby browser.js file. So let's move on to the next file in our list, which is Gatsby config. This is an important file in any Gatsby project. It gives you a place to list any site-wide metadata that you're gonna use for SEO purposes, like your site's title, description, etc. And it also gives you a place where you need to list any Gatsby plugins that you're using. Only Gatsby plugins need to be listed here, not any other type of plugin. If you list a Gatsby plugin simply as a string with the name, it will use its default settings. If you want to customize any of the options your plugin has, then you're going to write it not as a string, but in this object format where you say the name here under resolve, and then you specify what options you'd like to use. So anytime you install a new Gatsby plugin, make sure you also list it in this plugins array in your Gatsby config. Moving on, let's look at the Gatsby node file. As you can see, there's nothing in this file by default and very similar to Gatsby browser, you can just delete this file if you don't have a specific reason why you need to use it. It's for advanced use cases where you want to customize how Gatsby builds your site. 
Two common use cases for this file are if you want to modify your Webpack configuration so that, for example, it processes your CSS in a different way that isn't already included by default or with another plugin. Or if you'd like Gatsby to generate some pages automatically based on some of your data. So for example, you could add code here that will tell Gatsby to automatically create a new blog post page based on any markdown file it finds in your project. In a lot of cases, you won't need this file. If you do, Gatsby has given you another link here to the page in their docs that gives you details about exactly what code to write in order to modify how Gatsby is building your site. Next up, we have the Gatsby SSR file. SSR stands for server-side rendering. This file lets you customize how Gatsby generates the static HTML files that the browser uses to load your site quickly. Similar to Gatsby Node and Gatsby Browser, you generally do not need to add anything to this file and you're free to delete it. If you want to modify the way that Gatsby server-side renders your site, they've included a documentation link here where you can find instructions for how to accomplish whatever it is you're trying to do. All right, we're nearly there, just two files to go. Next up is the license that comes included with the Gatsby project. This contains the MIT license that Gatsby uses for its own project. If your project will include a license, you're free to modify this file so that it's more appropriate for the license your project should have. If your project won't have a license, you're completely free to just delete this file entirely. Finally, we have the readme.md. This is a file that's commonly used to provide some explanation about a project and some instructions for how to use the project. If you're using GitHub or GitLab, this file will automatically appear on the main page of your repository. And it's written in markdown format so that you can easily apply some basic styling without having to write any code. So Gatsby has provided an example of how to write a really friendly set of instructions for how to use a project. You can modify this example for your own needs so that you can leave yourself or other people future reminders for exactly how to use this project. That's it for the configuration files and the automatically generated folders in the default Gatsby project. Now let's finally look at the source folder. This is where you will be spending most of your time when you're working on your Gatsby project. By default, Gatsby includes a components folder, an images folder, and a pages folder. The pages folder is special and it's the only folder that absolutely has to be included in your source folder and it needs to be named pages. Any file that you include inside the pages folder automatically becomes a page that uses the same name as the name of the file. So for example, the index.js is the file that's used to create the homepage of your site. As you can see, all of the content from the homepage of your website comes from the index.js file. And like we looked at in the last video, if you modify this file, those changes appear right away in the website. So the home page comes from index.js. Because we have a file called page-2 in the pages folder, that means we have a page at page-2 on our website. Hello from the second page. So that's how the pages folder works. Any file you list here will become a page on the front of your website. The path of that page will match the file name of the file. The other folders currently in the source folder, the images folder and the components folder, these can be renamed, these can be deleted. You can basically organize your source folder any way you like. It's only the pages folder that needs to exist and be called pages. And then when you're ready, Gatsby will build your site based on the pages you've listed in the pages folder and the content that each of these files contains or imports from your other files and folders. The source folder is where you are safe to make any changes you like. Gatsby will never modify or delete or change any of the code you've written inside this folder. This is where you do almost all of your work. That's everything that's included in the Gatsby default starter. Hopefully that gives you a good idea of which files and folders you should edit and where to go when you want to start customizing your project. In the next video, we're going to introduce React and how you actually write your HTML in a Gatsby project. Until then, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.